We've been talking about building a better life. Building a better life. Uh, Pastor Eric told me this morning that he had a record attendance. I said, hmm, Cowboys kick off at noon today? <laughs> Every time he's had record attendance, the Cowboys kicked off at noon. But you know what? I don't really think that's what it is. I think Pastor Eric's coming into his own. The Lord's doing great things with him, moving him forward, and, and his ministry is flourishing. And I appreciate it very much. I like listening to him preach. Yeah. You can tell he had a good mentor. <laughs> Amen. Building a better life. Today we're going to be talking about commitment. Amen. Commitment. You want to build a better life? Build a better life by making commitments. Let's read, beginning with Matthew chapter 15 and verse 32. If you have a Bible handy, please take your Bible and turn to Matthew chapter 15 and verse 32. I want to send a shout out to my brother Marcus and my sister Suzanne Reidner up from Addison. Known these good folks for many years through our relationship with Christ for the Nations. Glad to have you all here today. God bless you. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 32 says, Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat, and I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. Verse 33. And his disciples said unto him, Whence should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? Verse 34. And Jesus saith unto them, How many loaves have you? And they said, Seven, and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave thanks and broke them and gave to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled, and they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. Verse 38 is our final verse. And they did eat and... And they that did eat were 4,000 men beside women and children. Now, this story sounds familiar, but it says 4,000 men. You find the 5,000 men in chapter 14. Jesus worked the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000 in Matthew chapter 14. And that was with five loaves and two fish, and they took up 12 baskets full. Here, they had... Uh, seven loaves and uh, a few fish, and they took up seven baskets full, feeding 4,000. Hmm. Hmm. Food that they had left over, no doubt, from the first feeding that they used to start a second miracle provision. Now, let me say something to you about this. It said there that when Jesus saw these people fasting for three days. Fasting for three days with their wives and their children out there. Can you imagine them getting ready to go off to hear this preacher? Hey, let's go hear him. Let's go hear that rabbi from Galilee. Oh, he's preaching and there's, work, there's the working of miracles and signs and wonders taking place. Wonderful thing. Let's, let's get ready. Let's get all the kids together. And mama says, okay. How are we going to feed our children? Oh, uh, it'll be okay. Let's just go out there and see what it's about. If we don't like it, we can come home. All right. And off they go. Day one, they find Jesus. And he's preaching. There's thousands of people there. He's preaching and praying for them and laying hands on them and, and miracles are happening. And he's just teaching and preaching and teaching and preaching and teaching and preaching. They, 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 evidently, they stay out there all night with their wives and kids. And then day two comes along and he's preaching and teaching and laying hands on them and miracles and signs and wonders and preaching and teaching. The same thing, same scenario over and over and over. Day two goes by and they spend another night. They're off out in the wilderness now, see, it's hard for North Texans to understand what wilderness is. But if you've ever driven through West Texas, <laughs> lived out there for 15 years, I'm talking, I know what wilderness is. 
And if you don't know, let me, let, me, let me just tell you something. It's centered around a place called Fort Stockton, Texas. Wilderness. You can't, it's not the edge of the world, but you can sure see it from there, they say. It's right out there. They were in the wilderness. That means there were no, no people around. Just them. Just this big crowd listening to Jesus preach. No stores. No gas stations. No, no, no place to, to get provision. The disciples said, how are we going to feed all these people way off out here? Who knows how long it took them to get there? And then on day three comes. All day long there. And that third day. And Jesus said, you know, they've been with me three days. I'm going to feed them. Let me say something to you. His compassion came when he saw their commitment. Amen. His provision for them came upon their commitment to the word. Yes. Amen. Oh, well, I don't know why the Lord don't do something for me. Listen, the Lord's going to do everything he can for you if you'll commit to his word. Right. Yes. You commit to hear his word? Yeah, but man, the service sometimes goes past 12 o'clock. Hey, their service went past 12 o'clock three times. It, it went past a bunch of 12s. It, it went past noon. It went past midnight. It went past noon. It went past midnight. It went past noon. Wow. And they were still there having church. Still there. How many, how many of you are glad you came to church today? Huh? Yeah. You're not going to starve. You're not going to starve if you get over on the Word. The reason they were there. Is because of the Word. When the Word of God is working in you and you make a commitment to have it in your life. You have to make a commitment to have the Word in your life because there's so much out there that's coming into your life that has nothing to do with the Word. Yeah. Huh? There's so much out there in this world that comes into your life that has nothing to do with the way God works. Has nothing to do with God's principles. Has nothing to do. I mean, they are exactly, think, they are exactly the opposite. They're thinking opposite than the way the church thinks. The way the church is supposed to think. The way the, the uh, opposite from the way that God works. I mean, out there they say if you want money, you've got to hoard it. You've got to find ways of manipulating people so they'll turn loose of their money. You have to sell everything with sex. You have to do everything you can to get it and grab it and keep it. Yeah. Invest it well. And they read the Bible and it says, He that would be first has to become last. No, 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 no. That ain't no way to go up in this corporate world, Lord. Mm -hmm. If you want to harvest, you have to sow seed. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down. Wait a minute, that's not the way they taught me in college. My MBA told me something different from that. Oh, yeah, of course it did. Of course it did. Everything out there in that world is opposite, is set against you. Remember, I've told you over and over, Christianity is not different from other religions. Christianity is opposite other religions. It's not just different. We're not a face in the crowd. This deal is opposite. Everybody else says, if you'll do this, do that, do this, do this. And sadly, so many Christian churches say the same thing. Do this, do this, do that, do this, do this, do that, do this, do this, do that. And you'll be good enough to go to heaven. Pardon me. I got off that lousy train a long time ago. I put my faith in Jesus who guarantees me heaven. I put my faith in him and he guarantees me heaven because he's there. There's a man in heaven seated on the throne. Saying, if you'll come the road I paved, you just come the road I paved. I made a road to you. He made a road to mankind from God. And men are still trying to work their way to heaven. Oh, all roads lead to God. Yes, they do. Straight to the white throne judgment. My road, this road I'm on is going to take me to heaven. Yes, it will. I agree. It will. And you'll stand before the judgment seat and give an explanation of how in the world you got there. Wow. Wow. This story ought to be told more often because it's the truth. Yeah. Not my road. My road came from the man seated at the right hand of God. My road took yeah. me straight to Jesus where I made a plea bargain. Pled the blood, escaped the judgment. Any, believer, any real believers in the house today? Woo, glory. I'm not hoping to escape judgment. I escape judgment the moment I put my faith in Christ. This is real Christianity. Everything else is just like all other religions. They're all the same. They're all the same. I said they're all the same. 